The ability of the judiciary to protect um, economic, social, and cultural rights in Pakistan is severely constrained by the legal and constitutional framework. Because <clears throat> in the first place, uh, there is very little recognition of economic, social, and cultural rights as fundamental rights, which the Constitution protects. And secondly, um, the justiciability of these rights becomes even weaker when the judicial authority uh, to implement any decisions that they give is also not uh, supplemented by um, good mechanisms for their enforcement and implementation. But I must say, to be fair to our judiciary, there have been times when despite a weak legal framework, judges have found um, a place to um, promote these rights. For instance, in the question of bonded labor, very good work was done by the judiciary, which then led to a new law coming into existence. In the area of uh, the right of uh, uh, housing, um, some progress has been made. Some progress has also been made on the LGBT rights uh, by uh, a declaratory judgment of the Supreme Court of Pakistan. It's not obviously a judgment that we think is comprehensively treating the whole issue of LGBT rights, but it is the beginning. So I must say that the experience, although not overwhelmingly good, uh, has not been uh, frustrating either. I think the first thing which is very obvious for the uh, enforceability of um, ESR rights and to be able to give relief and remedy to the victims is that these must be recognized as rights and guaranteed in the constitutional framework. There must be domestic laws that allow people the access to justice that they claim. Um, apart from the legal framework, it is very important in terms of having access to justice is that there must be complaint mechanisms on the ground which are easily accessible and which people can do, uh, 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 can access uh, with facility and with the confidence that they will get relief. Secondly, I think one of the important things uh, here in this particular area of rights is the question of access to, uh, to, to information. Without information, ESR rights cannot be litigated upon and it would become very difficult for victims themselves to then take on the whole burden of, uh, of um, taking cases to court where other public uh, and independent observers are not able to detect violations uh, apart from information through victims. It is in this context also that I think it's very important that like in our jurisdiction in Pakistan and in several other South Asian countries, and uh, uh, I will particularly mention India, the right to take a petition to court, the whole question of local standi has been expanded to include civil society organizations. So the burden on the victim uh, has been lifted to some extent. And I think that's a very positive sign uh, in some of the jurisdiction where we still have a great deal to do for the enforcement of economic, social, and cultural rights. I think the opportunities uh, that I look, see now are the, is the ability of civil societies to take collective action. And I think this uh, is one of the most positive signs where economic and social cultural rights violations can be detected, uh, accountability can be pressured for, and governments can be induced and coerced into bringing about mechanisms for accountability. On, on the uh, challenges side, I think the whole question of um, religious intolerance, which is growing and therefore affects the social rights of minority communities, the whole question of uh, the uh, discrimination against women and other vulnerable communities, especially migrant workers, these are very challenging issues because here the politics of countries and interstate politics really gains a lot of um, uh, importance and makes it difficult to take forward economic and social and cultural rights in that respect. The growth of and the increase of conflicts which is producing conflict, IDPs and refugees is another area which is very challenging for the promotion of these rights.